Hi, my name is Dr. Caitlin Regeer. I am a lecturer in media studies here at the University of Kent. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a research project I did for the Mayor of London with Professor Jessica Ringrose. So in the spring of 2015, public outrage started growing over a controversial advertisement running widely on the Transport for London network, the TFL. The advertisement for Protein World Protein Powder featured a blonde, white, thin woman in a yellow bikini. The model's rib cage could be seen. The gap between her thighs looked digitally altered, and the copy to either side of her body read, Are you beach body ready? 70,000 people signed a petition on change.org calling for the removal of the advert. And more than 370 official complaints were made to the Advertising Standards Authority. And so, in response, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, said that he would ban body shaming advertisements from London's public spaces. And he then set up a steering group and commissioned Professor Jessica Ringrose, who then brought me on to conduct research into the public perception of gender and advertising in Greater London. Now this project then led to a competition which is now granting free advertising space to advertisers who best integrate the research findings. So today I wanna to talk to you about what we did. So taking socially engaged methodologies as our starting point. The research design involved collecting documentary style interviews of women as they moved from different boroughs throughout the city. We then set up focus groups in schools and allowed young schoolgirls to do craft back art projects. And then we had a quantitative survey of 2,000 men and women across London. So to select the traveling participants, I spoke with them on the phone. And together, the participant and I would decide what was most indicative of their common use of London. So I met a woman at Park Royal at a hospital. I met a nightclub goer in Soho to take the night train home with her at 2 a.m. I met a woman in Tottenham, a new mum on her first journey out with her new baby, and a pensioner in Putney on her journey to a local sewing shop. And it was through these experiences that we researchers began to think more critically about personal versions of public space and the relationships people have to media displayed within it. So it was in Kennington, which is a tube stop in South London, when this initially became apparent to us. Here we met Sierra, a single mother of two who identifies as black British and uses sticks to support her walking due to limited mobility. On this rather windy day, Sierra moves slowly but deliberately across the street to meet us before gesturing at a bus stop. The advertisement situated on the bus stop was for American Apparel and it featured a large-scale image of a woman in flesh-colored nude underwear. Sierra stopped in front of the advert and said she was quite shocked. And further, now, to be clear, Sierra was not concerned about her own consumption of these images. She worries about the image's impact on her seven-year-old daughter. She worries because she says it's very hard to teach young girls the right way, and she directly implicates advertisements, advertisements in this struggle. In fact, she's initiated a rule in her household. When a targeted ad pops up on her daughter's tablet, they turn it over. They then slowly count to five and wait 
before seeing if the ad has passed. This is to mitigate the number of advertisements her daughter sees in a day. But of course, this technique is utilized to limit advertisements appearing on personal media, being consumed in personal space. And Jessica and I wondered how this instinct to turn it over functioned or malfunctioned in public space and how this technique might relate to the bus stop. We asked Sierra. I can't, she said frankly. If it's something I can walk away from, then I will, but when I'm walking towards the bus stop, there's no way. So Jessica and I are interested in this concept of public space, which, as we quickly discovered in this project, might mean different things to different participants. Predominantly, our encounters have found that advertising in public space is dissimilar to advertising in private space, and that one's ability to flip or turn an advertisement off is greatly diminished. This is in line with Rose Warren's important Australian study on public advertising that suggests that public advertisements can be seen as a form of harassment due to the potentially unwanted and yet inescapable nature of public media. Further, we found that space, place, and placement seem to have an impact on the way advertisements were experienced by individuals and the relationship these embodied women had to the space itself. We then used these personal, textured, qualitative interviews, such as Sierra's, to create a quantitative survey of 2,000 men and women across London, and then broke down the responses in accordance with gender, age, ethnicity, and more. And we found that many of the themes depicted in Sierra's interview with regards to race, disability, children, public space, sexualization, were echoed in the survey findings. So for instance, 71% of black Londoners felt underrepresented. Sexualization was generally seen as unacceptable. In fact, two in three Londoners felt that women were often shown in revealing clothing when it wasn't relevant to the advert. And only 18% of participants could ever remember seeing a person with a disability depicted in an advertisement. But this work didn't come without controversy. In September of 2018, just six weeks after we launched our Women's We See report, a blimp depicting Sadiq Khan in the infamous beach body ready bikini was released in Parliament Square. The Khan blimp was in reaction to a Trump blimp that flew across London earlier that year and depicted the US president in a baby diaper. Here, the protein world bikini was intended to be an act of shaming for Sadiq Khan, a man, supposedly on par with putting an adult man into a diaper, as with Trump. That Sadiq Khan's support of women by way of this very study should be shamed via a bikini shows how powerful these representational signs are and that we're in the midst of representational warfare. Because as long as a yellow bikini, emblematic of sexualized femininity, can be understood as a means of humiliating masculinity, as long as a public figure's support of women can incite enough anger to erect a 29-foot blimp of shame, the need for intersectional public feminist projects such as this one that can incentivize change are truly vital. So on the back of this research, the mayor of London held a competition in which 90 brands and creatives competed to win 500K worth of advertising space. This was for making positive changes based on our suggestions. The winning campaigns are currently running on the TFL, which is significant because it is the biggest advertising estate in the world. 
The TFL is used by 5 million people daily. Now to encourage those creatives to apply and engage them in thinking differently about public space and the advertising within it, we once again employed documentary style methodologies. This drew upon the voices of the traveling participants whose experiences of public space and the media within it informed this entire project. And so it only seems fitting that I stop talking now and let them have the final say. So here you go. I think it's racist. Certain height, certain look. Sexist, it's sizist. It's not the way I see women in society today. It's all of the ists that aren't the right ists. London is accepting of different cultures and beliefs, that's what I love about it. As a black gay woman, I would say it's a very easy city to live in. Diversity to me means people from all over the world. If you don't see yourself reflected in any of the images that you're bombarded with, for some people it will harm their self-identity. Adverts should be representative of different types of people. Why can't you use people like me? Bigger body shape, disabled. There's nothing wrong with using people like that. It's real, it's how society is. 